Hey everyone, it's that math magician. On this video, we're taking a look at functions and we're gonna see can we find the domain and the range for a given graph. And this time we got two graphs we gotta figure out the domain and the range for. So let's see if we can figure it out. We're gonna start with this left graph, which is just a weird collaboration of all these different lines put together. I think we can figure out when we remember that domain is how far left, how far right, does that graph go? What inputs does the graph exist within? And as we see, the graph is existing everywhere where that blue line is until it gets to those endpoints. So what are the endpoints? Well, I see an endpoint there. I see an endpoint here. And what are those X values? I believe the highest that this graph can go is positive seven. So over here, I'm gonna say that X is going to be less than or equal to seven because once it gets larger than seven, the graph doesn't exist, right? It stops existing past seven. So that's why we're gonna include the seven there. Over here, what's this y x value gonna be? And this x value is also going to be negative seven. We're gonna throw in the greater than or equal to sign there. That's what the domain is. Negative seven all the way to positive seven. If I was writing this as set notation, I know some of you guys are learning set notation, so I wanna include that. We could write it with our hard brackets, because the numbers are included from negative seven to positive seven. Alrighty, let's do our range. Again, range is how low, how high does this graph go? What Y values or what outputs exist for this graph? Again, looking at this blue line, we see all of these Y values existing within inside those lines of the graph. There's no broken parts. So we know we're good for everything inside that weird line shape that it, that is going. So let's go with what's the highest point. And I believe the highest point is at two points. It's at the same point. But the highest point that this graph exists is at six. This graph does not go higher than six. So we're going to say that y is less than or equal to positive six. Now it's including everything in it as we go down until we get to the lowest point, which is going to be negative two. So y is greater than negative two or equal to negative two. Anything underneath that, it just doesn't exist. The graph doesn't exist. All right, you guys are doing so good. Let's make this set notation as well real quick. So we could do negative two all the way to six, hard brackets, because the numbers are included. Really, really good. All righty. Oh, I, should gotta, I totally forgot. We gotta figure out, is this a function? And if this is a function, well, we could do our favorite, our vertical line test. But because this guy here, let's see if I can even grab the line. There we go. As I move this vertical line, oh, I didn't, I didn't grab it. There we go. Oh, trying to. Alrighty, as I move this vertical line, it's not that vertical, but we're gonna act like it is. Notice that as it moves, it's going good, right? Every input just has one output until we get to positive one. Look at positive one right there. At positive one, we have this whole line here where there is just so many outputs for that given input. We don't like that. When we have want a function, every input needs only one output. This guy, not a function. That vertical line test failed. All right, and speaking on vertical line tests, if I come over here and try it, right, we can come over here and do it now for our, our second graph. We'll skip, skip the order. As I slide through this curve, notice that it never overlaps, that this vertical line test is only hitting one point each time throughout. So this guy here is definitely a function. We'll write that in as we got this going, just so we can say that. So not a function, this is a function, Let's do the domain, let's do the range. I see that this graph is existing again from endpoint to endpoint, right? It starts over here, or it ends at positive six. Notice that that is an open dot, it's not closed, it's open. That means we do not include six. Six is actually not part of this graph. So when we write our inequality here, whoops, I don't want that in blue. When we write our inequality, we're going to say less than six not equal to six because of that open dot, okay? Because of the open dot, we cannot include six. Same over here, it's at negative six, so we're gonna say x is greater than negative six, but we're not including that dot. Really, really good. Okay, let's do our range. Let's start with how low does this graph go? 
This graph goes low as negative six, but look at no open dot here because there's not an open dot. I can use my equal sign. I can include the equal sign because there's no open circle at this point, the lowest point. All right, as I move up though and get to my highest point, it is this end point right here. What's that value? It is negative two, it's open, so I don't include it. So why is everything less than negative two to negative six? All righty, let's end this with our set notation real quick. Because they have no equal signs, we use parentheses if we're doing set notation. Over here, I'm gonna have negative six, I'm gonna have negative two. Left side gets a hard bracket, because it did include the number, this guy gets a parentheses because it did not include negative two. That's how you do domain and range. Don't forget, domain is left to right, range is up and down. You guys got this, don't give up. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.